Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. I hope you are liking all the videos and do let me know in the comment section if you want me to make videos on any other particular topic. So without any further ado, we will see today how we can monitor our activities in Snowflake Snow site. So when we go on to the Snow site portal, we can actually see on the left hand side, we have been discussing throughout that we have this activity section, right? So in this, you have something called as query history. So the moment you click on this query history, you will actually see the list of all the queries that you have been running on the databases right so these are all the queries that i have been running they were success they were failed right all the status the query id the text basically the sql command which you actually ran right who ran it right which warehouse was used to run it what was the duration when it started and also if you want to add any extra columns to it you can just simply check in the right hand side option you can just select the end time the session id the client driver byte scan cluster number rows query tags right the moment you click on this you will actually see on the right hand side you know you have other details as well when the query ended what was the session id what was the client driver byte scan rows everything you will get all the details over here now similarly if you only want to filter out for the you know failed queries let's say if you want to filter out for the running queries right now there is no running query so or you just want to you know uh, get the status for the blocked or the queued queries you can actually get it from this particular filter right also remember on the right hand side there is an option of auto refresh on and off right if you want to turn on the auto refresh option then you can simply select this on option and it will get auto refresh also remember that let's select one any of the queries let's select this query now the moment i go inside this particular query you will actually see that it shows okay that you used my warehouse this is the details of the my warehouse which was used if you want you can go and uh, you know get check the configurations of your my warehouse from here as well you know what was the activity what was done what was not done what is the status of it how many clusters are there you know does it get auto suspended after 120 second you know so all these details are actually available about your warehouse over here right which is nothing but on the same page in the admin section it's the warehouse section now details related to your query right when it was run query id session id typical things which you saw over there as well the result set as well you can go and you can export these results set as well the, if i click on this export result i need to provide a file name let's say exports right and these ex, uh, results are actually exported in the csv file format right if i go ahead and open this uh, particular file you will see that i have all the details in the csv file right now you will also see let me go a little up over here now if i go to this query profile right now what is this query profile this gives you little more detailed in depth information about your query right so basically it tells you the execution plan right it talks about the execution plan it talks about how your query was processed right what was the processing what was the disk io what was the initialization the statistics related to your query how many bytes were scanned right what, how many partitions were there how many total number of partitions were there right and also you know it also tells you which was the most expensive node essentially it means that you know what was the most expensive operation using this query execution plan you'll get to know that right so this is how this most expensive node uh, works as well so it says table scan 2 right so this is the place which took in the most amount of time right so this is all about your query history over here you can go and check in depth so let's say if i open you know any of my query i can see the query profile related to it so right now you know for example it's a just a select star operation right so there is only one uh, tab over here so essentially if you have any complex query you can actually go ahead and see the most 
you know uh, the most time taking process as well if you go to this copy history on the left hand side you can actually see all the copy activities that you have done through the snow pipe uh, through the pipe or uh, you know even through the copy into that we have done so in my previous videos i showed you how to do copy into right using snow sql we did copy into multiple tables right if you have not watched the videos please go ahead and watch the videos how to load parquet data how to load csv data in the snowflake tables using snow sql right in those videos i have explained in detail about this now if you see uh, you know basically you need to select a warehouse here initially it will be blank you need to select a warehouse so i was using my warehouse and test warehouse so the moment i select warehouse so all the copies that was done into any table we, you will get the details over here you will get the file name you will get the loaded uh, you know when it was loaded so it was loaded one week two days ago when i was creating videos and then what was the status of it what was the database schema table so i loaded cities table I, I loaded home sales i loaded my json table all those videos are actually live right now correct so you can go ahead and watch the videos and understand how we can use snow sql to load this data what was the size what was the you know location and what was the number of rows so you can actually see in the details of all these uh, history now if i click on the you know copy if i click on that particular copy now if i select the warehouse over here right now and i select this day range as last 14 days since my copy was done like more than seven days back so i have uh, selected last 14 days now you can see that the cities.parquet file was loaded one week two days ago and all these details are here right the data preview if you want to see the data this was the data that was added right these were the columns which were used you know this was the table details right so all these details are actually very well preserved you will understand it uh, in case you want to you know go and understand how many copies were made what was done right so this is all about your copy history right this is how you can go so let's say if i want to go and check this contact 5.csv.gz right now in that case i can simply go inside right i can simply select the date range 14 days let's say and whatever warehouse right i, I want to choose i can choose that so you can see you know how many times it was tried it was loaded how many times it failed what was the data all these details right you can actually go ahead and see it now let me just go back here now if you want to choose a particular database right right now all are selected you can filter on the database on a particular database to see the copy history of that particular database to see copy history of a particular schema you can filter out here right to you know basically it kind of gives you a very good insights into the activity that was done so this is pretty much that I wanted to cover in this particular video regarding task history. We will discuss in our upcoming videos. So thank you so much for being till here. I hope you're following my videos and you're also, you know, trying to replicate what I'm trying to do in your free snowflake version. I have created a video on, you know, how to create the free trial account. Just create a trial account, do all these things and you will become a very good snowflake developer as well. So thank you so much for being till here. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.